Okay, guys. I'm going to go over one of each type of the gas calculations you'll see on the test. Okay? The first problem reads, a mixture of oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen gases exerts a total pressure of 278 kPa. If the partial pressures of the oxygen and the hydrogen are 112 kPa and 101 kPa respectively, what would be the partial pressure exerted by the nitrogen? Okay? It's talking about partial pressures and a mixture of gases. That tells us that it's a Dalton's law problem. Dalton's law states that P total is equal to the sum of all the gases that, that make it up. In this case, there's three gases, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. So the total pressure is going to equal the pressure of the oxygen gas plus the pressure of the hydrogen gas plus the pressure of the nitrogen gas. Okay, so those are four variables that we need to worry about. So let's go ahead and write them out. P total is right there. It says total pressure of 278 kPa. Okay, the pressure of the O2 is given right here. 112 kPa. The pressure of the H2 is right there, 101 kPa. And the pressure of the N2 is what we're trying to find. Since all of them are in kPa, and it doesn't say that we need the pressure in any particular unit, we don't have to do any conversions. All we have to do is plug these variables into this equation. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the equation over here. Okay, so P total equals the pressure of O2 plus the pressure of H2 plus the pressure of N2. And now I just have to plug in the numbers. Okay, P total, 200 and 78 kPa, PO2, 112 kPa, PH2, 101 kPa, plus the pressure of N2, which is what we're trying to find. So 278 kPa equals 112 plus 101, which is 213 kPa plus PN2. Okay, it's addition on this side, so to get it right, we subtract it from both sides. So, 278 minus 213 gives us 65. S 65 kPa is equal to the pressure of N2. And that is our answer. Don't forget to put units on your answer. Okay, and now I'm going to move on to the next type of problem. Okay, this problem says that the temperature inside my refrigerator is about four degrees Celsius. If I place a balloon in my fridge, that initially has a temper of 22 degrees Celsius and a volume of 0 0.5 liters, what will the volume of the balloon be when it is fully cooled in my refrigerator? Okay, this one's dealing with a change. Okay, it's going from 4 degrees Celsius to, or from 22 degrees Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius. Okay, it's going from outside the fridge to inside the fridge. Whenever you're dealing with a change, it's going to be a combined gas law problem. Okay, the combined gas law is P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. Okay, this problem only has temperature and volume though. So temperature and volume. It doesn't say anything about the pressure. But we know that a refrigerator is not a vacuum. The pressure does not change when you go inside the refrigerator. So we know that P 
is going to be constant. So we don't need it in our equation. The combined gas law then becomes V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. If the pressure is the same on both sides, we don't need to worry about it. So now let's go ahead and write out our equations. V1 equals T1 equals V2 equals T2 equals. The first one, these are the initial conditions. So it says that the balloon initially has a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. So 22 degrees Celsius and a volume of 0 0.5 liters. But then you're putting it in the refrigerator. The refrigerator has a temperature of 4 degrees Celsius and we're trying to find the new volume. But wait, we can never use degrees Celsius when doing combined gas law problems. Because sometimes you have negative degrees Celsius and negative degrees Celsius could give you negative other things which you can't have. So we always have to convert to Kelvin. Okay? And how you convert to Kelvin is you add 273 to the measurement. So T, nope, T1 becomes 295 Kelvin and T2 becomes 277 Kelvin. And that's what we can plug into our equation. So we have V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. V1 is 0 0.5 liters over T1, 295 Kelvin equals V2, which is what we don't know, over 200 and 77 Kelvin. Okay, to get the V2 by itself we're going to times each side by 277 Kelvin so that it cancels out over here. We have V2 equals 277 Kelvin times 0.5 liters over 295 Kelvin. The Kelvin units can cancel each other out we're left with liters, which is cool because that's a measurement for volume. And then we just have to plug it into the calculator. So let me pull up my calculator. Okay. We have 277 times 0 0.5 divided by 295 which gives us a value of 0 0.47 liters equals V2. Okay, and that makes sense. If the temperature is going down, we expect the volume to go down as well. Yay! That's how you solve the combined gas law problems. Okay, we have one more type of problem to do. So let's go ahead and check out that one. Okay, this problem says, I, if I have four moles of a gas at a pressure of 5.6 atmosphere and a volume of 12 liters, what is the temperature? Okay, this one is dealing with one sample of gas. Nothing's changing. It's talking about the number of moles. That cues us off that it is an ideal gas law problem. Okay, so the ideal gas law is pervnert. PV equals NRT. Okay, if we solve this equation for temperature, T, the equation becomes PV over NR equals T. Okay, because to get the T by itself, we have to divide both sides by N and R. Okay, so let's write out all variables. We have P equals V equals N equals R equals T equals. Okay, T is what we're trying to find. Four moles up here, that is an N. N is number of moles. Okay, 
5.6 atmospheres. Okay, that's a pressure. Volume of 12 liters. And R is 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres over moles Kelvin. Okay, that is all we need to know. This number again is a constant. It will be given to you on any test. You do not need to memorize it. So now let's plug it in. We know T equals PV over NR. So T equals our pressure, 5.6 atmospheres, times our volume, 12 liters, over our number of moles, 4 moles, and our R, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres over moles Kelvin. Atmosphere on top, atmosphere on bottom cancels out. Liter on top, liter on the bottom cancels out. Moles, and then moles on the bottom of the bottom cancel out. And we're left with Kelvin, which is cool because that's a unit for temperature. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator. Okay, first I'm just going to multiply the top together. 5. 0.6 times 12, that gives me 67.2 over 4 times 0 0.0821 gives me 0, 0 0.3284 Kelvin. So 67.2 divided by 0 0.3284 equals 204.6. We can round it to 205 Kelvin. And that is our answer. Always remembering units. And that's one of each type of problem you'll see on the test.